Welcome everyone to another episode of Price Targets with your host Bitcoin Jack. It's been a while, so we're gonna get into the action pretty fast. Let's keep the pace high today. Um, first of all, I want your attention for our lovely sponsor Prime. They've been with me for a long time, so I appreciate that very much. If you sign up using the link in the watermark slash in the description below and use the promo code Bitcoin Jack, you can get up to 0.5 BTC deposit bonus on your first deposit. There's some terms that apply, so make sure you're aware of that. But thank you, Prime. Um, you can trade anything you want pretty much on, on Primes. You have futures, spot, lots of olds. So um, thank you very much. And if you appreciate these videos, make sure to check them out. All right. Um, it's been a bit of a rocky couple of weeks. Um, the good thing is that if you remember on Bitcoin, the price level around just below 40, the green line here, which sits at 39,850, um, has been the weekly level I outlined for in previous videos that I wanted to see hold. Um, the reason for that is pretty simple. Um, resistance here, resistance here, broke it had to hold. Um, obviously, it could have gone to lower, but when we zoom in, I'll try to explain why that level was very important for me. Um, it feels like a lot has happened, but when we look at this chart, you know, this actually has been a pretty shallow retrace. And um, right now, we're pretty much battling the last bit of resistance up here. Um, so things could start to look um, start to confirm the continuation. I'm going to drop to the three day. Um, so one of the reasons this also had to hold is the fact that this kind of broke our resistance. Um, and there's quite a bit of volume uh, trapped right here. So to flush that, it had to go down to the first support, which was here. And if we further zoom in, um, and I think a daily level is not even enough. Let's see. Yeah. So what we can see right here, um, this green line is at the top of this candle right here. So this was, in my opinion, pretty much the first impulse um, that kind of got into this reaccumulation pattern. So this was the first impulse and you really you know, on average, especially because you had this um, price development right here. Um, that was my, my really my point of support. And I do believe it's very close to the 0.5 of that range too. Um, so in hindsight, that's all, you know, easy to say, but um, we've had the level for quite some time. Um, and this has been, you know, this has been pr a pretty strong rally. Um, so it kind of does look to me that, um, you know, maybe you get down here, but you really want to see the 50, the 50 K level hold. And right now it's starting to look to me that this might have like one last pullback, but maybe it won't have a pullback at all here. And that this is just going to accelerate to the upside. So let's go back to a slightly higher time frame. Um, I did some wick off point and figure charts to calculate kind of the, the markup. And um, this little block has the suggestion if we, you know, if the rules are met and I did everything correct, that um, reaccumulation or distribution could be either um, of what happened right here is supposed to um, occur in this zone. So this is 75,000, give or take, and this is 89. I don't think it's going to reach 89 that easily, um, but a push to, to the 70s should be in the cards. Um, and then the larger reaccumulation, which is, you know, this entire structure has higher targets. 
So I guess that my best guess would be if both are calculated correctly, is that we're going to see price expansion into this range. Um, very likely see some kind of fake out <clears throat> retest of the previous all time high, maybe even slightly low. It could, you know, technically come all the way back to 50 um, and then go to the next target. This is all, you know, we need to see confirmation first that we have a breakout. Um, but it is, you know, it is not looking all that grim right now. Um, to be honest, you know, this is my pinned tweet on Twitter. Um, in of the conviction that this has been a way for correction all this time, and that we're gonna get the final leg up, and just looking pretty pretty strong. So I guess um, this is fifty level is where I want a bit, but honestly, I'd much prefer for price to go up here. It would show a lot more strength, uh, and then come down and retest it. We're gonna to have to see that, but for now I'm just holding. Um, there's no signs of weakness so far. The only thing that's kind of concerning is that this is sloping up slightly at lower volume. So really what I wanna see in the next three days is that this is gonna to start to curl upwards. All right, so kind of summarizing for Bitcoin, um, 50 is, seems to be the level to hold. Maybe it's, it could work to like 84, but that's really where um, support should be at. Um, and then to the upside, I do think that this rally has legs into the 70s, perhaps the 80s, before it's going to start having a, a larger time frame consolidation. Let me take a sip of coffee. Oh. So I'm pretty excited. Um, it it does look like well we're gonna get another bullish run, and to be honest, like all the things we talked about in the previous videos, like the on chain stuff and other things, they haven't changed. Um, in fact, maybe they've even become more bullish than they were. So you know I've been screaming bull here. So this was this was really. You know, it was manageable, um, but it was also tricky. Um, so I'm really happy that price actually has come back up. All right, so I think that's it for Bitcoin. Then let's go to, uh, let's start with Bitcoin dominance. Um, I posted this on Twitter. A couple of days ago, um, this does look. Let me grab like a weekly. Um, this does look like a buy information for now, and that we're going to see a rally at least to fifty percent dominance. But there's quite a lot of empty space right here without any structure. Um, so on average, these olds have just been rallying without very little structure um, to their downside on the ETH BDC pairs. So I'd say we go here, but depending on what Bitcoin is going to do, it could actually reach, you know, well, maybe reach like 57 or 60 um, upwards of here. And anyone saying that we didn't have an old season, like a real old season, this right here, to here, that's the 2018 old season, like the old season that everyone was talking about. Um, this is kind of, it's almost similar. Ob obviously, there's a lot more old, so maybe it didn't reflect as much in every old, and a lot of olds actually didn't really rally, and there were a lot of new olds that rallied way harder than the other olds. But it does look, unless things change, but that's you know, the thesis for now that Bitcoin season 
is not going to be a fun season for most old BTC pairs. And on Twitter, we've talked about ETH BTC. So if we grab like a daily here, um, this has been the chart I posted a couple of weeks ago, like in the beginning, actually an entire month ago, beginning of September. Um, could this turn around and become bullish again? I could, but you know, if, if Bitcoin starts to put in like 20 percent weekly candles or, or bigger, um, depending on perhaps, you know, some kind of catalyst or just the fact that supply demand is so skewed and there is actually enough demand, then it's just hard to believe that the old BTC pairs are going to keep up. It's, you know, it has also not happened during this period. If we grab, if we look at what happened to olds during this rally, um, they started to outperform maybe around here. And then during this part, they actually sold off on, on relative strength, right? So that's interesting. Um, then I do think that there is room for ETH BDC to, um, to really plummet a little bit further. Same goes for ADA, Cardano. It's down quite a bit. Um, this is my high time frame target. So that's kind of done now. Um, I would say that this is where I'd be closing my, my short. For ETH, I'm willing to at least hold it to target two, right? Unless somehow we start ranging here, break out, hold it, um, and manage to, to get back up here, but it just doesn't look that way. I think that's it. 12 minutes. I hope that was useful. Um, I don't want to go ahead and, and start shouting crazy numbers where this could go. Let's just wait for the breakout, share with you guys where I do expect that we're going to find some liquidity to the upside if we do actually have a breakout. Um, maybe the last thing I can share is what I'm looking for here. Um, if we did something like this, then here, let's see. So basically I want to see price go above this highest high after some kind of pullback into the level right here. I want to see that hold. I want to see it reclaim the high and then start bidding below. All right. And then I think that it's going to attack the monthly and the uh, high time frame resistance. But at that point, I do think that we're going to go and target the levels that we talked about more in that range. So I think right now it's just, um, if it turns out to be correct that we're going to get that fifth wave, it's just going to be managing your position. Um, selling too early is going to be very painful. Watch the funding. Um, if funding goes too high, then your positions are just going to be very costly and it's probably a better bet to reduce some size, you still have some upside if price goes up, but you don't have the margin anymore that you're paying a shit ton for. And then when things reset, you might be able to to get back into um, into positions. So resistance in the 70s, 80s, support at the 50s. And um, that's it. All right, see you next week.